Let's talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus is a very complex proof that helps us bridge the gap between derivatives and integrals. It's a two-part proof, and there's many fascinating proofs on this on the internet, but today we're gonna to look at a real-world example involving the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's look at the two parts of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Part one is taking the derivative of an integral. So we can see here that we're taking the derivative of the integral of a function that's in terms of a different variable other than x. So if we take the derivative of an integral, what you find through the fundamental theorem of calculus is proof is that they cancel each other out and basically become the function f of x. The second part of the fund fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, is what we call a definite integral. A definite, definite integral is what allows us to find the area between a curve, the x-axis, and the vertical lines of a starting x and a finishing x. So here you can see that we're integrating the function from a to b. So that's my starting x value, my finishing x value, and this is the function in which I want to integrate in terms of x. So this will help me find the area under the curve. So the way we write this is that we would be finding f of b minus f of a, we're using a capital F to denote the fact that we have integrated this function little f of x. So let's look at a real world example. So let's pretend or imagine that we are the manager of a concert hall and we have a concert that night and from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the afternoon or the evening we're going to allow people into the concert hall. So we want to basically figure out how fast the people are entering our concert hall to make sure we have enough employees working to get the people in quickly and efficiently so that everyone's ready for when the show is ready to begin. So we take this formula or this equation, and I've called it R of T, which stands for the rate of change of people entering our concert hall. So it's equal to 1500 T squared minus 400 T cubed. So what this equation tells us is that any time between 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock that evening, we can figure exactly how many people are entering our concert hall at any time. So if I were to plug in, for example, uh, one hour into allowing people in, I would get the value of 1,100, which would stand for 1,100 people per hour are entering in the first hour we allow people in. Okay, so what we want to try to do is we want to try to figure out the total amount of people that enter the concert before it begins. So from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, that is a definite integral. So we're going to use the second or the part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus to find this value. So if we integrate this rate from hour zero, which is going to be 5 p.m., until the concert is supposed to begin, which is at 8 o'clock, which is three hours later, we're going to take a definite integral from zero to three. And then I'm going to put my rate into the equation. So if we integrate this rate of change function, so we're going to use the power rule, we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by, so that's going to be 1500 divided by 3 t cubed minus 400 divided by 4 t to the fourth, and we're going to evaluate it from time 0 to time 3. So this is going to be 500 t cubed simplified minus 100 t to the fourth from hour zero to hour three. So if we want to relate this back to the fundamental theorem of calculus in part two, we want to integrate it from zero to three, then we're going to evaluate capital F of three minus capital F of zero. So time three minus time zero. So if I substitute that into my integrated equation, that becomes 500 three cubed minus 100 3 to the fourth, and that's a quantity, and then I subtract 500 times 0 cubed minus 100 times 0 to the fourth. We know that that's all going to become 0, so this is going to be 13,500 minus 8,100 to give us a grand total of 5,400. So what does this number 5400 stand for? This number 5400 is the total amount of people that entered our concert hall. 
So that tells us now that we're gonna have 5,400 people come in from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Let's take a look at what this would mean graphically. I know I like to see what they look like on a, on a screen. So what I've done is I've made a graph of our R of T function and I've plotted four values. I've plotted at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and 8 p.m., which we'll call hours 0, 1, 2, and 3. So at hour 0, when we began our problem, there was no one in the concert hall, so I have an ordered pair at 0, 0. And then at one hour, there was 1,100 people per hour entering the arena. At hour 2, there was 2,800 people per hour entering the arena. And in hour three, the rate of change of people coming into the theater was 2,700 people per hour. And now we're ready to begin our show. So if we take what we did with, our, with part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we found the area under this curve. So if we were to actually enclose this figure between the curve, the x-axis, hour zero and hour three, we now have a, an enclosed region. So the 5,400 people is what we figured out with our definite integral and the part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus to tell us that what is underneath this curve stands for the 5,400 people that entered the auditorium. Okay, well, taking a look at these different points, we see that there's a different amount of people coming in depending on what time it is between those three hours we're allowing them in. So it may help us as the manager to see the average rate of change of people entering the auditorium over those three hours. So if we take a look at the average rate of change formula, which is one over B minus A, which stands for one over the time interval, so it would be hour three minus hour zero, from A to B, integral of A to B, of our rate of change. So this, if we substitute in our time interval, this would be three minus zero, again integrating it from zero to three of the rate of change, formula that we use to determine how many people were in our auditorium, we've already figured out that this is going to be 5,400 people. So if we multiply this by one-third, which is our time interval, then we're really dividing our total amount of people by the total number of hours that we allow people to come in, which gives us 1,800 people per hour. So the average rate of change formula has gotten us back from the rate of change formula to another rate of change formula. One is an instantaneous rate. It tells us exactly the rate of change of people coming in at any time. So if we look at the average rate of change number, that 1,800 people per hour is the average of people entering the auditorium over that three hour period. So if we were to graph that function, that's just a constant function of 1,800 people over the three hours. So that would look like a horizontal line right at 1800. And if we look at it over the three hour period, this makes a red rectangle. This red rectangle is now three times 1800, which is the exact same value of 5,400 people that entered the auditorium. So now we have a relationship between the average rate of formula and the, de the definite integral of the part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're getting 5,400 total people using a definite integral, and we're getting 1,800 people using the average rate of change formula for that definite integral. We talked about the fundamental theorem of calculus, and that has two parts. The proofs are very complex, so we wanted to look at kind of an example of where we would use the fundamental theorem of calculus. We know that the fundamental theorem of calculus bridges the gaps between derivatives and integrals. It allows us to find, basically, the total amount of something that has happened over a time interval in the real world. So in our particular problem, the fundamental theorem of calculus in part two allowed us to find the total amount of people that entered our concert hall over the time interval from zero to three.